I've been meeting directors all my career in rooms and restaurants and cafes and all over this town and others uh, to, in order to decide whether to work together. And I met Mike and he was editing, he was in his edit suite because Mike is an editor and then a director and a writer, but he edits his own work. So he was editing um, Haunting of Hill House, his TV series from last year. And um, I met him in his edit suite and we sat down. I just, uh, two hours later I left having had a very open, we talked about the film, we talked about The Shining, we talked a bit about Doctor Sleep, but we talked an awful lot about our lives and um, in a sort of open, personal way that I, I found unusual, you know, in, on a first meeting. And then when I started uh, exploring the role of Danny and seeing that his, uh, there, was, there was lots of things in it that I could relate to. He's done something rather clever, Mike, with, it, with the last act of our, our story because the, the Shining novel and the Shining movie that Kubrick made are quite different and um, indeed sort of split fans of the novel in half a little bit. And um, Mike's managed to do something with the end of our film which is going to sort of almost heal that rift, I think. It's quite clever. But I don't want to be any more specific about that because I'll give, I'll give things away. For me, obviously, there was already a platter of kind of fear and darkness to her that I didn't really need to address. They were already written on the page. So we were looking at her style. I think when it comes to this, the simple bit of our fashion, I think I wanted to channel um, hippie. I don't know. There's some sensuality within her, the, the the barefootness of her. It's kind of Woodstock that I've never been to, <laughs> but I wanted to do it with a cool slash hat. He kind of merged the two together: the the shining, the film, and a bit of the book, and also sort of the revelation of this film like Stephen King being the dad and Kubrick being a mom and kind of Dr. Sleep becoming the baby. This is new and it's unique and it's fun and, and we will also enter worlds that they will recognize. I definitely took a lot from Wendy Torrance, definitely there, and kind of the negative energy from the Overlook. I think the sets and the characters he really played homage to. I hope they enjoy the story. It's kind of a roller coaster of emotions. Um, I hope they enjoy that. Snake by Andy is one of the first characters introduced into the True Knot. She comes from a past of um, a lot of darkness and a lot of abuse. And I think that when Rosa Hat finds her, she is interested in her because she is very vulnerable and she is she does have a very dark past and you know is able to kind of manipulate her into this this tribe. And it ends up being a great match. I was just telling everyone, so The Shining was the first scary movie I ever saw. I was six years old. I know. My grandfather showed it to me, and he was not supposed to, but he was like, this is the best piece of cinema. You have to see it or you can't be an actress. And you know, at six years old, I was already, I was already full on acting. So he was like, you have to see this. And I, I watched it, and I was scared, not because it was, you know, I, not because it was typically scary just because it was so it was psychologically scary and it really got to me and just seeing a man turn like that on his family it just really got to me and so I had nightmares for a while but I remember a year later I went to my mom and I said I really want to see it again I want to watch it again and um, and yeah so it's 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 been really close to my heart through my entire career I funnily enough had never watched The Shining before I took on this role um, but I'd always heard about The Shining, I'd always heard about Stephen King. I've stayed away from horror movies as much as I could, but I'd always heard about Stephen King, and so to be of something that has so much um, revere, and like, like the amount of mastery that Stephen King has put out in the last decade has just been nothing short of, you know, phenomenal. So to be a part of his next story, yeah, it's second to none for me, I feel honored. For my character, I mean, I have family, so wanting to protect family is like second nature for me. And Abra Stone being my daughter, you know, with powers, I feel like uh, almost being like out of depth. I don't have the shine. I don't know what to do with someone who has the shine. So I know what it's like to be out of depth. Doing, you know, uh, my first ever big studio movie, you know, sometimes you can feel like you're, ooh, okay, this is, this is a lot right now. And I kind of draw on so many different aspects to, you know, what it means to love your child, what it means to try and protect your child from people that want to do harm with her, like True Knot and, you know, <laughs> the top hat. 
So um, yeah, pull some different things out of that. Mike is just so talented because he, he pays homage to Kubrick and brings in that visual iconography and that, that look. But he really does his own thing. Um, and he also pay, honors King because he has that sentimentality and that legacy of trauma that's woven in. You want the authors to be excited about their adaptations and, and Mike is just the perfect person to adapt King's work. And so to have his blessing is huge. Having the book as source material was a, a nice gateway to learn a bit more about the character. I play Abra's mom, um, so Abra has the power of the shine, um, and as a mom of someone who has that gift and a curse, of course I'm going to be worried about her, but also proud of her and trying to understand what this thing is. I think it's a really terrifying, immersive experience, but it also has so much emotion in it, so there's really something for everyone. Because I think this film combines uh, the sort of magnificence of that film event of The Shining, um, extends the moment of The Shining into the present, but does honor to this book, which literally is tracing what happens in terms of the trauma that a four-year-old boy might carry with him into adulthood, um, and the fight that he has to accept what is a gift but also can be a curse um, and what I love about the book is that he is brought to a different understanding of that gift by a young woman who embraces her gift. The Stephen King stamp of approval is essential I mean I think whenever you take a piece of material that someone created you want to believe that you do justice to it in the same way there was a character Dick Halloran, created by Scatman Crothers, and I wanted to do justice to him as well. But by doing justice, you also want to extend the same intention and sense into the piece. So um, it was very important to get his Mr. King's stamp of approval. I'm getting a. Getting the, the blessing from Stephen King to move forward with how we wanted to do this movie was, was kind of the first really terrifying part of a process that remained terrifying kind of every day and is only now starting to let up just because there's nothing else for me to do. Um, but no, it, it was really, really intimidating uh, because he's been my hero since I was a kid. So um, ultimately, if he hadn't kind of given us his blessing, I wouldn't have made the film. Um, but he did, and, and I'm, I'm so happy that, that he likes the movie. First and foremost, I hope they're scared, uh, but I hope they get to enjoy this really powerful new story that King created while still celebrating what, for a lot of us, is one of the most you know, iconic and important horror films ever made in The Shining. So I hope everyone gets to celebrate Kubrick and King with us. But that was one of the hardest things that I had to do, and it was a it was a question that was in my mind kind of every single day, um, finding that right balance. But I couldn't think of another way to do it because as I read the novel Doctor Sleep, all the images in my head were Kubrick's, and and I had a really hard time reconciling that. So um, it seemed to me to be the only way to really do this movie right in a way that you know celebrated Kubrick and King. I can't help it, just being, being such a King fanatic, putting Easter eggs in, in things like this, it's, it's one of the, the real joys I have in my job. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, and yeah, in this one in particular, for fans of the Dark Tower, there are quite a few.